I and Q and A. The Inquirer Question and Answer Program comes to you every Tuesday, and uh, every week we sit down with a leading newsmaker to discuss the issues of the day. We are uh, brought to you by Inquirer.net. We are carried live on Radio Inquirer Nueve Noventa, also live on Facebook. We are also carried on the various Inquirer social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and uh, the different chat apps including Line and uh, Kakao. My name is John Neri. I'm Editor-in-Chief of Inquirer.net and uh, it is a pleasure to host yet another program of INQNA. With me is my co-host. Ms. Christine Sabilio, Chief of Reporters of Inquire.net. Thank you, John, and thank you to everyone who is watching right now on Facebook and on our website. Um, so before we introduce to you our special guest for tonight, we have three things that you might not know about him. So we got uh, a reliable source for, <laughs> to give us a bit of trivia about our resource speaker tonight. So number one, but this is something that you often see in his profiles. He's the youngest elected member of the House of Representatives during the 9th Congress. He's a, he was also the youngest senator in the 12th Congress at the age of 37. Um, number two is he plays the piano. <laughs> and the third one is, this is very interesting, he did not call for a press conference in, three, in six years from 2010 to 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Ralph Recto. Thank you for having me. Salamat. Thank you, Senator, for making time uh, for us. Uh, how interesting, no press conferences, and yet you were re-elected in 2016. <laughs> um, I think it should be by merit, eh, unless uh, they have something to ask you. Uh, I'm not in a habit of calling for press conferences to promote myself, basically. So, like I said, I don't think I'm a newsmaker, as you <laughs> mentioned earlier. If I were, then a lot of media would always be knocking at their doors, right? Well, we're knocking on your doors, and uh, we'd like to ask the first question, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Um, your most recent press statement was about Mary Jane Veloso. Yes. What, what is your take on the Mary Jane Veloso case? Well, basically, ang pagkaalam ko dyan na uh, posibleng inosente na ginamit lang as a drug career na hindi niya alam. Mm -hmm. uh, she seems to be an OFW, wanted to be a maid in Indonesia, mm -hmm. at uh, may illegal recruiter, kung hindi ako nagkakamali. At uh, yung illegal recruiter ata yung naglagay ng drugs doon sa kanyang maleta at mm -hmm. nauri sa Indonesia. Yun ang pagkaalam ko. So, uh, dapat tulungan ang ating pamalaan lahat ng OFWs. No? At all na in this case, kung laban sa droga nga, uh, mas mabuting buhay siya para maituro niya kung sino yung mga sindikatong involved sa droga kasama na yung illegal recruiter. So that's basically my take on that issue. Yeah. Senator, there has been a lot of talk and a lot of controversy mm. surrounding what uh, President Duterte supposedly told um, the Indonesian president. The latest, I think, is that um, he just told um, Jokowi that they should just follow their laws and uh, they didn't actually discuss in detail. Do you think the president, President Duterte, should have given a stronger appeal for Veloso? I think, I think it's incumbent on our president. No? Na, uh, humingi ng clemency din palagi ko kay Mary Jean Veloso bi bilang isang Pilipino. No? Um, like I said, magagamit din nila yung kanyang testimonya dito sa problema sa laban sa droga. Um, so that's basically it. Yeah. What, what do you think happened? So President Jokowi had a different understanding of uh, of their meeting uh, and the palace says, no, the president di didn't give the go-ahead or the green light mm -hmm. for the uh, execution. Well, what I can say is that mm -hmm. hirap na hirap si yung presidential spokesperson at si Martin and Danan <laughs> na ipaliwanag yung mga bagay-bagay na to. Yun na maliwanag. Mm -hmm. eh. um, okay. So you will always have news items every day, I suppose. Yeah. Eh. How, how can we resolve this? So, keeping the welfare of Mary Jane in yes, mind, yes. Uh, what do you think should the Philippine government do to resolve this uh, issue? Well, like I said, uh, precisely why we issued that uh, press mm. release today. No? Mm -hmm. um, uh, sinasabi ni Mary Jane, victim siya dito. Mm -hmm. I, she's probably a victim here. Mm -hmm. 
uh, by an illegal recruiter na ginamit ng drug syndicate, so on and so forth. Magagamit natin yung kanyang testimony, if at all. There are, I think, nahuli na yung illegal recruiter dito. Mm -hmm. There's a case There's already a case. That's right. filed in the Philippine courts. Mm -hmm. I think it is, and the reason why she has not been executed in the first place is because the Philippine government was successful in the past mm -hmm. informing the Indonesian government that she will be used as a witness in these cases here. Mm -hmm. So she's not been executed precisely because of that. So I think that is the most important urgent issue today. No? So we follow that up as well. No, uh, Maybe we should send our lawyers there and find out what can she testify on mm -hmm. if at all mm -hmm. magagamit ba natin in the cases here and to impress upon the Indonesian government yes. that uh, she's still needed for the case here precisely so. precisely that's the point mm -hmm. so. all right. and that's precisely why we issued the press release today do you think Senator that mm -hmm. the President is also careful because of his strong stance against drugs that he doesn't want to seem sympathetic maybe of a case like that. And we understand it's where it's coming from here, no? Mm -hmm. But there's no justifiable reason for the president to say na, assuming he, di he did say it, no? Or allegedly what they say, na, na pwede nang patayin niyan, or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. that was, no? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the point, no? There's no justifiable reason, to my mind, at mm -hmm. least. Senator, on July 25, you were elected the Senate minor Minority Leader. Uh, what is the role of the Senate Minority in the Duterte era? To provide contrast. To provide contrast. To provide contrast and mm -hmm. to pr provide an alternative point of view, basically. But you, I, so I today we had the first vote on the first bill. On, on the... On uh, the postponing the barangay election. That, that's right. And you voted no. And I voted no. But, but, many be, reasons, yes. but, but before you explain that, yeah. um, I was there when you were elected and you uh, gave your acceptance speech and you mm -hmm. talked about... Uh, the role of the minority is both to stand your ground on certain things, but also to seek common ground. Correct, correct. Tama yun. We're not here naman para pahirapan ang administration. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, dapat sumuporta tayo sa mga polisiya na sa tingin natin mga katulong. Mm -hmm. no? um, but we also have to provide some alternative insights mm -hmm. and some contrast as well. No? Mm -hmm. uh, there are many points of view, and I think the role of the minority is to provide uh, an alternative point of view in mm -hmm. some instances, in some instances naman, support natin yung programa. And you had a lengthy uh, speech uh, explaining your no vote mm -hmm. uh, for the postpone against the postponement of the Barangay, Barangay and SK correct. elections. Yes. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, well, number one, ah, ang sinasabi nila na we, we postpone the Barangay elections para makatipid. Hindi totoo makakatipid mm -hmm. tayo. Eh. Because we're just we're just postponing the expenses yeah, for next year. In mm -hmm. fact, mastatas pa expenses next year. Dahil mm -hmm. uulitin yung ginawa ulit this year. Mm -hmm. Alimbawa, registration of voters. Mm -hmm. So dadagdag pa yung gastos. That's number one. No? Okay, number two, uh, I don't think it is right for politicians to extend terms of other politicians. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if we were discussing extending terms of mayors, governors, congressmen, and senators? Mm -hmm. Siguro, kagabi, napanood ko yung Train to Busan with my wife. No? <laughs> so, so, siguro marami, <laughs> uh, maraming, maraming mga pupunta sa Kongreso sabi huwag niyong gawin yan. Mm -hmm. Ito, dahil barangay elections, parang uh, barangay elections lang naman yan, SK elections lang naman yan, kaya ipaspunan natin yan. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Parang hindi tama. Remember, the Constitution also says na what is unique in Philippine in our in our uh, form of government also is the barangay system, mm -hmm. including the participation of our young people in the SK. Mm -hmm. We just passed a law also in SK reform act. Mm -hmm. uh, at nangako tayo magkakahalalan. No? Ngayon, sinasabi natin, hindi, gagawin, hindi natin gagawin yung pinangako natin na magkaroon ng halalan sa SK. No? At maliwanag yung term of office three years lang ng barangay officials. Mm -hmm. That is the contract with the people when the people voted for them. Okay? Ngayon, babaguhin natin. Hindi tama yun. No? Pakatlo, sabi nila makakaantala daw to sa war on drugs. Mm -hmm. To me, the contrary. To the contrary, uh, it would be better because the issue of corruption, crime, and drugs will be front and center of this election. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're saying that 13,000 of 42,000 barangays are infected with drugs mm -hmm. and 92% of barangays in uh, yeah, Metro, Manila. Metro Manila are infected with drugs, all the more you should have elections para yung taong bayan makapili to kick 
them out of mm-hmm. office, there will be candidates running on the platform of the anti-drug campaign. It's front and center today. Mm-hmm. Huh? And for those who fought drugs, man, the barangay officials, uh, what better way than to re- re-elect them as well mm-hmm. into office, di ba? Uh, for, sabi nila, yung PNP, hindi daw makaka-focus sa anti-drug campaign. Like I said, to the contrary, mas mabuti na, na yung PNP na sa lahat ng barangay, as it is during elections, mm-hmm. uh, embedded in the barangay, nang sa ganun, yung, mapapag, mapagpapatuloy nila yung, yung tokhang program nila o project mm-hmm. nila sa mga barangay. So mm-hmm. all the more, uh, mag, mag, magagamit mo yung anti-war on drugs, di ba? Or yung war on drugs in this case, no? And uh, they always use the reason also na uh, magkaka-underspending daw ang gobyerno because mm-hmm. there is a law. Well, apparently, if you read the newspapers, they're saying parang, parang presidential elections yan na hindi ka pwede mag-public works projects, you cannot mm-hmm. appoint people for the duration of the campaign. 45 days. Eh, hindi naman yun na nakasulat na sa batas pagdating sa barangay. 10 days lang. Just 10 This days. is not a marathon. It's not a 90-day marathon or 45-day. It's just a 10-day sprint, so to speak. Siyam natulog lang to. Sin- oh, nga, sinabi mo nga, siyam natulog lang. Siyam natulog lang to. Mm-hmm. Uh, sabi nila may election fatigue din daw. Uh, in 2007, 2007, you had the national elections at the same time, the barangay SK elections also within the year. Walang election fatigue. Manual pa nun. Mm-hmm. 2010, you had the presidential election and you had the barangay ele- elections in the same year. Mm-hmm. Wala rin fatigue yun. Mm-hmm. 2013, you had the same. <laughs> so why now may election fatigue? What is uh, the reason for postponing? Yun ang dahilan nila. The four, the four Fs I mentioned. Di ba? Okay. Oh, yun ang dahilan nila. So we pointed out that their excuses are flimsy. Na hindi hindi tama yung mga excuses sa binigay nila for not having elections. Meron pa kayong sinabi na maybe now is the time to drive the barangay captains who are also drug captains. Precisely. Pa- Precisely. Okay. So as you're going to come out with a drug list for barangay? Uh, I think the president has a list. But the point is this. like it, That's why you have barangay elections. Mm-hmm. So those who fought the drug war can be re-elected mm-hmm. if at all. And those who allow themselves to be uh, drug lords in their barangays, <laughs> eh di matanggal din yan sa position nila. Why extend everyone? Why give everyone a free pass? Mm-hmm. Basically. So those are the reasons why we're against the postponement of the barangay elections. What do you think will happen? Pero dalawa lang kami bumoto dyan, ah, <laughs> na against the administration. So you case. think, yeah, so I think in, in, the, in the House, it was also passed on third reading today, mm. the postponement. So it it looks like a done deal, no? Yeah, it looks like a done deal. Yeah. yeah. Senator, there are So that's the first bill in this Congress mm-hmm. that was voted on. Senator, so. there are a lot of uh, discussions now in the Senate, a lot of mm-hmm. big topics. Um, one of them is the the hearing on the summary killings related to the mm-hmm. to the the drug so, campaign. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, how is that? going what is your thoughts do you agree um with those saying that it is um not helping the drug campaign of the administration the actual hearings or the investigation now first of all we should support the president in the anti-drug campaign no? uh, anti-drug anti-crime anti-corruption campaign of this administration uh, but we should not condone extrajudicial killing or vigilante killing for that matter no uh, I forget the number already, but uh, something like 3,000 people have died already. No? Yung one third of that, or a little less than half, uh, with police operations. Mm-hmm. Uh, ang claim, siyempre, ng police na lumaban. Okay? I'm sure pinag-aaralan ngayon, or may mga investigation na ginagawa tungkol dyan. I hope so. No? Mm-hmm. To me, the bigger issue is the vigilante killings. Uh, you may win the war on drugs. But if people will, res- will lose respect for the rule of law, mm-hmm. walang panalo dyan. Uh, and then you will eventually have copycat killings. There's an excellent mm-hmm. article today also in the Inquirer mm-hmm. regarding that. No? So the most important is law and order. Kailangan sundan yung batas. And I pointed that out during the hearing in the Senate mm-hmm. no? uh, when uh, Batu was there. Uh, I think we should support the police. Uh, 16,000 of our police don't have 
firearms. Mm -hmm. Many of them have not even shot mm -hmm. their firearms. Mm -hmm. no? So on and so forth. Kulang na kulang ang sasakyan ng police. You may have 911, mm -hmm. pero kung wala sasakyan para magresponde, eh, bali wala yung 911 mo. So, mm -hmm. I, I've also filed bills that uh, I think we should be f hiring 25,000 policemen yearly, mm -hmm. at least for the next six years, huh, to improve the police uh, to population ratio, so on and so forth. You have more police on the streets, that would be a deterrent to crime. Mm -hmm. uh, maliwanag yun. Uh, so yung mga yan, dapat sinusuportahan natin yan. No? But I think you can't make shortcuts and you can't allow vigilante killing. I think that they should concentrate uh, their investigations also and to show that they're serious against vigilante killing. Mm -hmm. After all, yung sinasabi ng Presidente rin naman ngayon eh, na in state of lawlessness, mm -hmm. Not only is it the drug war, not only is it the terrorism, mm -hmm. but also the vigilante killing, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Senator, yung sa uh, Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights, uh, they will resume the hearings on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, a Senate may, may not minority leader, you're, you're in all committees, I think. I mean, you That's can correct. That's correct. What, what should we expect from the third hearing on Thursday? You know, I'm not sure. I've not looked at the uh, re invited resource persons on mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it will be a follow-up on uh, the hearing that should have been conducted when the president was in uh, Cambodia. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. the hearing. So, mm -hmm. there might be new witnesses, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I think mm -hmm. that would be the same lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, I can check on that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, uh, we, we want to hear the testimony of these witnesses, what mm -hmm. they have to say. Uh, at the same time, fair, be fair to the police as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough balancing act. Uh, That's right. Akin, like I said, don't, uh, let me reiterate, it is the vigilante killing that I'm more concerned about. Mm -hmm. no? I think we need to give the police the tools uh, to be able for, for them to be able to do their job properly. Uh, but then we should make sure also na people don't take the law into their own hands. Black ID yan sa police din natin eh. That's true. Uh, Senator, what about, uh, so there's a an ethics case against uh, Senator Laila de Lima. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see that playing out? There was a discussion earlier. I was mm -hmm. just monitoring it when, uh, when I was working in my office. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then I just received two sealed envelopes earlier because I'm still a member also That's the right. ethics, as ex mm -hmm. member. No? I've not read those two documents yet. It's in the field <laughs> okay. But having said that, um, I think Senator Dillon was correct also na jurisdiction yes. muna siguro mm -hmm. ang pag-usapan before form and substance. Okay. But uh, I think the other day, Senator Laxon pointed out that the maximum penalty would be expulsion. Uh, but it's too early to, too early to talk to about, talk about that. Right? So, jurisdiction pa lang nga eh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, form and substance. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should jump right away to uh, speculate on penalties. So. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've been on the record, uh, mm -hmm. uh, just pointing out that uh, Senator De Lima uh, must be presumed innocent, like Correct. all others, just like any other. Yeah, and you know, accusers must come up with evidence. Correct. Just like Correct. any other. Just like any other. Mm -hmm. Have you heard from her after you gave that statement? Uh, no, not really, not really. But you know, it's hard for me to think that she would be involved in any of these. Mm -hmm. so. What is your uh, personal take on that? I mean, do you know? I've not seen any evidence, eh? uh, so I don't know. Uh, what I know is what I read in the papers. That's mm -hmm. basically it. Senator, uh, another uh, high-profile um, inquiry in the Senate: uh, emergency powers. Uh, what is your uh, transportation? Your, uh, yeah, for oh, the, for okay. the transportation. Yeah, the, the, you know, from the very beginning, I've been asking the DOTR to mm -hmm. submit a wish list. Mm -hmm. Ano ba proyekto na gusto rin niya. Because right. at the end of the day, many of these, as far as projects are concerned, would be negotiated. Walang halos walang bidding ang gusto dyan. That's what the emergency powers is all about. Na wag gamitin yung procurement law para mapabilis mm -hmm. natin. To mm -hmm. a certain degree, I'm, I'm amenable. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's a no-brainer to me. You're losing 2.5 billion a day in traffic, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Sometimes the cost of uh, incompetence is more than the cost of corruption <laughs> no, or inefficiency. <laughs> no? uh -huh. um, uh, having said that, tignan din natin yung emergency powers na gusto nila, yung 
uh, what the, they must submit a wish list. Ano ba yung mga proyekto niya? Ipaliwanag nila kung paano makakatulong yan. That's one. And um, two, do they have an actual bill? Mm-hmm. So, I think a week ago, they submitted it already. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, there's an initial list of 1.1 trillion pesos mm-hmm. na binigay. Mm-hmm. Uh, initial lang yun. So, tingin ko, first figure yan. Mm-hmm. Wala pang program of work yun. Mm-hmm. And, and I think your own estimate was originally 1.5 trillion. Uh, uh, hindi naman. They submitted the 1.1 trillion. Okay, pero okay. hindi pa kompleto yun. So, mm-hmm. possibly minimum yun. Now, okay. I, not all of them are super urgent sa tingin ko. Alimbawa, mm-hmm. training center ng DOTR. Okay. Uh, palagay ko, hindi makakatulong sa traffic yun. Training mm-hmm. center yun. Eh. So, mm-hmm. tanggalin natin sa listahan yun. Mm-hmm. Yung mga ganun. No? Yung, mm-hmm. Ano yung pinaka-urgent? Especially yung long gestation period. Yung, you have to construct, it'll take five years yeah. to complete, so on and so forth. Uh, what are the most urgent to begin with? Yun ang unahin natin in that list also. Uh, that's one. And then two, ano yung immediate na pwedeng gawin? Halimbawa, mm-hmm. uh, pagbili ng mga tow truck, uh, ambulansya, you have 95,000 accidents in Metro Manila every year according to the MMDA. Mm-hmm. That's something like 250 people dying every five and a half minutes. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Thereabouts. So, mm-hmm. Or every day. No? Uh, uh, so, tow truck, bakit kailangan ng tow truck mo? pinalalaki mo yung kalsada, magpa-park naman yung kotse doon. Mm-hmm. Kahit pag palawaki mo pa ng mas, mas malaki pa yung kalsada, magpa-park lang naman ang sasakyan. Hindi useless din. Mm-hmm. Even before we think of making tunnels, eh di tow truck muna, tanggalin natin yung illegally parked vehicles. Yung mga ganun, yung mga simpleng commonsensical uh, na solutions that you can, uh, you can do right away. So yun ang gusto kong makita in those uh, in that list or in the emergency powers that they want not all are concrete related nga pala. but in principle in principle we're willing to uh, i think we should be open to the idea mm-hmm. like i said it's a no-brainer to to a, to a certain extent uh, mm-hmm. 2.5 billion a day and growing mm-hmm. not doing anything about that is even worse you're losing 2.5 billion a day Senator, you traffic. also talked about an expiry date. Oh, incidentally, what, yeah, 2.5 billion a day is, what, 700 billion a year? That's mm-hmm. what, 4 or 5% of GDP. Uh, not to mention yung, mm-hmm. yung lost family time. Yes. Uh, kawawa yung manggagawa natin, umaga, gabi. Mm-hmm. Takes them, what, 3 hours to get to work, 3 hours to get home. Yeah. So yung it's implication also a quality of life issue. Quality yeah. of life issue, so mm-hmm. why not, huh? Pero ipaliwanag nila na mabuti. And then, set certain parameters. Halimbawa, uh, dapat tanggalin natin yung premium payments to the government. Tataas lang yung cost to the user. Eh. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, dapat yan user-centered. Let's say they're gonna build a toll. Okay. A, a toll road. So what is the least cost for the user? That's how we should do the bidding. Mm-hmm. In the, who will bid highest by premium payment to the government? Mm-hmm. Are see. we naive to think that mm-hmm. you give a premium payment, that proponent will not get it back from the user? Yeah. Ayun ang ginawa ng nakaraan eh. Mm-hmm. Diba? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I think our bidding should be the other way around. Mm-hmm. No? You win this toll road if you can provide the least cost. Uh, or you build an MRT, LRT, you improve the PNR, mm-hmm. how much will it cost the user? Affordable ba yan? Mm-hmm. That's how we should look at it. Hindi yung palakihan ng bid, nakikita ang gobyerno. This is all about public service. What is the least cost? Ito yung quality that we want. Mm-hmm. What is the least cost to the user? That's how we should look at it. So, dapat FOI compliant yan. <laughs> all these contracts should be open. Yes for review by Congress and by the public and media. So, yun ang dapat ilagay sa emergency powers, among others. So, marami yan. There's gonna be a lot. Yeah. Senator, yeah. you talked about a need for an expiry date for the Correct. emergency powers. Correct. How long do you think should it take the government to finish everything that they need to do? I think the president should, in the emergency powers for DOTR, to, yes. <laughs> um, two years, three years, maybe even less. So just enough for the bidding, the purchase. So on and so forth. Right-of-way issues. Yeah. So, alimbawa, right-of-way issues. Um, 
normally ang valuation niyan is BIR zonal valuation. Mm-hmm. So you're saying wala nang hindi na pwedeng mag-apela yung may-ari ng lupa kukunin mm-hmm. mo right of way niya eh. Mm-hmm. Baka naman mababa masyado yung BIR zonal valuation. That's why he files a case in court. Mm-hmm. Huh? So why not do it para simple na lang times to the BIR zonal valuation? Automatic mm-hmm. computation. Maybe automatic something way. like that. We mm-hmm. can look at something like that. Huh? Mm-hmm. And then you put that in an escrow account. Mm-hmm. For the right, marami yan right of way din eh. Kakailanganin mo. You need to build more roads, you need to build more bridges, so on and so forth. Diba? Not only in Metro Manila, ha? Okay? That goes for your trainers as well. Ha? So on and so forth. No? So, um, so, these are examples of what probably could be included in the emergency powers for the Department of Transportation. And remember, ha? Uh, if you want the, the economy to continue to grow, you need to make these investments in infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, important yan. Mm-hmm. Senator, um, let's say hi to uh, the people following us uh, from Taiwan, from Qatar, and also from the Republic of La Union. Uh, okay, well, binabati natin ang mga kababayan natin sa Taiwan, La Union, Qatar, at nakakatuwa uh, that they are monitoring news developments in the Philippines. No? So, ganun kamahal ng Pilipino ang Pilipinas. Mm-hmm. Senator, you... Concerned sila sa mga balita. Uh, yes, they are. In, in fact, y- yun yung laman ng mga comments namin, eh? all, all these uh, OFWs for instance. Senator, you spent just a little over a year as NEDA Director General. Yes, yes. How did that How d- did that experience uh, shape your views now, for yeah. instance, on infrastructure yeah, uh, development? Yeah. Well, I, I, could, I could say that uh, there are, there, there's a lot of bright people in NEDA to mm-hmm. begin with. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe one of the brightest uh, government agencies mm-hmm. that we have. No? You mm-hmm. have a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a lot of work to do as well. Mm-hmm. No? Uh, in, well, hindi lang naman infrastructure ang mahalaga. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, most important to me is the human capital to begin with. Mm-hmm. No matter how many airports, seaports, trains, highways you build, if you're not educating our citizenry, only the educated will use that infrastructure to his benefit productively. So the, the challenge is to also invest in human capital. And that's why the title of secretary is uh, social, uh, social economic social planning. Economic planning mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, importante yung human dimension din yan, no? yung human capital din. Uh, you provide them the opportunity getting a good quality education and make sure that people are healthy as mm-hmm. well then you're you're able to do that you build the infrastructure everyone will have will be able to utilize that infrastructure better more productively for his own benefit mm-hmm. so makikinabang sa magandang infrastruktura yung marunong gumamit ng infrastruktura na yun eh. mm-hmm. kung hindi ka edukado hindi mo magagamit ng uh, more productively that infrastructure as well so I think that's uh, something that Neda has taught me as well. No? Now, in many of our projects also, the only problem is employment. Eh. So during my time in Neda, we put an employment odometer. Uh, we should be bean counting. Uh, how many jobs will this create? Mm. Uh, in everything that we do, when we borrow money, when we invest that money, mm-hmm. you look at the economic rate of return, and how many jobs will this create? So I think today, uh, when they make presentations in the cabinet or the NEDA board, meron ng employment odometer. <laughs> okay? That's what I call it, an employment mm-hmm. odometer. Binibilang mo dapat yan. Mm-hmm. And maybe yeah, that's that. helped out because today your unemployment rate has gone down. That's right. Uh, so nakakatulong yun. So, and there's a lot of more things that need to be done. No? And so, uh, NEDA is also an economic planning agency, as you very well know. So mm-hmm. you do the Philippine Development Plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only should we have a six-year plan, but you have to have a 20, 50-year plan as much as possible. If insurance companies may do that, mm-hmm. why not the economic pl- planning agency of government? Mm-hmm. Senator, we're going to take a one-minute break. Sure. Uh, when we come back, we'll say hi to the other, other uh, audiences following us from uh, different countries. And we'll also ask uh, questions about um, ICT, yes. about uh, Globe and Smart. Yes. 
from the sponsor of the department of the bill that created the Department of ICT. Uh, this is I and Q and A, and uh, we'll be back with Senator Ralph Recto, Senate Min Minority Leader Ralph Recto, in after a short commercial break. Thank you. Balita, show me. This is a story about Filipino courage, people who get bullied but never back down, a nation that shows greater strength when faced with bigger foes, heroes who suffer setbacks but come back better than ever, a country fighting against all odds and being victorious in the end. This is the story of the Filipino people, best told by the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Get more from the country's number one newspaper with Inquirer Plus Digital Newsstand. Download now. Tatanungin ko ang lahat ng nararapat itanong. Tatanungin ko si Namanong at Manang. Friends. Office mates. Si Obama. At ang barangay tano. Tatanungin ko ang mga taong dapat tanungin para sa mga bagay na dapat ipaliwanan. Para sa bansang kailangan magtanong. Para sa kinabukasan ng ating bayan. Good evening, and we're back uh, to INQ&A uh, time. Yes, um, good evening, and to everyone watching, um, welcome back. Um, Senator, could we probably greet the our viewers from different countries? So we have people from the U.S., from New Jersey. We have uh, viewers from Hong Kong, Geneva, Switzerland, Dubai, as well as Batangas. Oh, marami akong yeah. fans galing sa Batangas, Batangas. palagay ko. <laughs> so, binabati ko lahat ng mga kababayan ko sa Batangas. Lahat ng kapabilmanyan ko sa New Jersey, Hong Kong, <laughs> Geneva, at Dubai. Oh, so, halos buong mundo na to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, have, you have one tenth of our population all, all over the world. No? So, uh, nakakatawa that they're tuned in to your program. Thank you, Senator. So, I think, uh, let's start reading uh, some questions from social media. Yeah. Right? Um, so this one is from Facebook, from Angela Nobleza. Ano po ang plano ng Senado sa, um, teleco sa telecom na walang pagbabago? I guess this is a consumer concern. A lot of yes, people yes, are yes. complaining about drop calls and yeah. other uh, issues. I filed many bills. Well, the yeah. first one, uh, uh, napasan na at ito na pirmanan ng dating Pangulo, mapapakinabangan ni President Duterte ngayon yung... We have a new department, the Department mm -hmm. of Information Communication Te Technology. Mm -hmm. So, tinanggal natin yung C sa DOTC dati na hindi nila magawa yung transportasyon at communication. Mm -hmm. Kaya tinanggal <laughs> natin yung C. Tagtayo tayo ng bago department, mm -hmm. Department of ICT. But that's just the first reform measure. The other is uh, we're strengthening us. I find this also already to strengthen the regulatory powers of government, particularly the NTC. And uh, tinatanggal din natin yung value-added service doon sa telecommunications, among others, marami pa eh. So we filed all these bills. Uh, and I would be writing the chairman of this committee to prioritize these bills. I think that the, the new cabinet secretaries also, mm -hmm. uh, sooner or later, I think September, we will have a landak. I'm mm -hmm. hoping that they, they include some of our proposals in the minority as priority legislation in the okay. Ladakh. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about, common ground. Mm -hmm. uh? So regardless if you're administration or minority mm -hmm. or opposition, mm -hmm. faster internet speed, mm -hmm. lahat tayo may gusto na to. Sabi niyo nga, broadband is the third utility. Correct. Mm -hmm. diba? uh, well, uh, it's the third utility next to water okay. and power. Diba? Uh, and incidentally, I also mentioned a few days ago, one fourth of all our schools lack water. What a too big some our classroom mm -hmm. natin. So can you imagine sanitation? Mm -hmm. huh? One sixth of all our classrooms nationwide, walang kuryente. So papano natin lalagyan ng broadband yan kung walang kuryente to begin with. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say water, power, and then the internet mm -hmm. is the third most important pub public utility now. Diba? 
So, uh, yeah, marami tayong panukala para pabilisin natin yung investment in the ICT. Palakasin natin yung uh, regulatory powers of the NTC. Mm -hmm. uh, palakasin pa natin lalo yung DICT. Mm -hmm. uh, for us to leapfrog development also into the information age. Marami magagaling na Pilipino naman dyan sa, uh, sa ICT. Eh. So this is another leg which our economy can stand on later on. Eh. You, you now have the BPO sector. Uh, by in a, in a few more years, mas malaki na ang makokolekta natin sa BPO, mm -hmm. sa foreign exchange, kaysa ng kaysa OFW, OFW remittances. No? Uh, but can you imagine if you had faster internet? Can you imagine what we could accomplish uh, and to break that digital divide in the rural area sa so walang yeah. access uh, to the internet? Uh, so I think government should make the necessary investments also for the last mile. Mm -hmm. Uh, to connect houses, mm -hmm. electricity din yan, That's yeah? right. to the grid, so to speak, di ba? Another question, uh, the, num the first question listed there, um, it's an interesting question. He was asking, th should there be an age limit and should we require a health permit perhaps for those running for public office? Uh, um, qualifications to run for president, Nasa sa ligam batas yan. Meron ding edad yan. Mm -hmm. Halaga 40, 41 if I'm not mistaken. Di ba? A minimum. May minimum age din yan. Uh -oh. So, read and write lang. <laughs> Itong Ang tinatanong ay health, health, ano permit. Daw? health, uh, uh, health, health permit. Health permit tulad ng mga manggagawa. Uh, maybe, yeah. uh, 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 a clean of uh, good uh, clean uh, bill of health. Yeah. Uh, yan naman tinatanong pagdating ng kampanya yan. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, tinatanong lang. Yung opponent, bibirahin ka sa sabihin, you may not be healthy enough or mentally fit mm -hmm. enough to run for public office or to run for the presidency. Di ba? So, there will always be pressure. Katulad sa Amerika ngayon, mm -hmm. Uh, oh, with Hillary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yung, uh, front and center ngayon, at least for this week or next week, will be mm -hmm. the help for of uh, Hillary as well. No? That's right. And the tax returns of uh, Trump, <laughs> right? Among <laughs> others. So, so, lahat naman ito pinag-uusapan during the campaign. Eh. Time may be question number four. Okay. So, oh, this is a good question um, from Brian D. What are the challenges being the minority floor leader, especially since the president is very popular? Very challenging. Una una, you have to be one of the first, if not the first, to be in the session hall every day. Mm. <laughs> and uh, you have to be the last to leave the session hall every day. So, ang trabaho dun, madun magbantay din, na hindi ka palulusutan, mm -hmm. diba? Uh, ng mga panukala, na hindi naintindihan. So, your job is to make sure that you're, 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 you're like the bantay ng taong bayan dun sa mga panukala na iniyahayag mm -hmm. ng administrasyon sa Kongreso or in this case in the Senate. So, taga-bantay ka dyan. Uh, and to provide a contrast and another point of view uh, as much as possible. No? Depende sa paninindigan mo at paniniwala mo. No? So, that, that is your job as minority leader. And we might only be three in the Senate mm -hmm. right now. There are 24 senators and three in the minority. But we will make sure that our presence is felt during all the debates and in all the issues being uh, discussed in uh, the Senate. But Particularly, the next one will be the budget, the emergency powers, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Speaking Aside of from the investigations, right? Mm -hmm. the, speaking, of the, speaking of the budget, Senator, uh, when the uh, uh, proposed budget was... Uh, was uh, turned over uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. What, was, what were your first impressions? Good question. Uh, number one, there is a departure from the previous administration also. Mas malaki yung uutangin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. number one. Okay, number two. Uh, so therefore, mas malaki yung deficit. Okay? And then, um, part and parcel of the budget moving forward are the tax measures being mm -hmm. proposed. Okay? So, they, they plan to reduce taxes by roughly $175 billion, individual and corporate income taxes, mm -hmm. but in return, want to collect $600 billion more in taxes. That's important because these revenues will fund the budget. And how to raise the taxes is an important issue because of fairness. Mm -hmm. So, pag-aaralan natin lahat yan. Same thing with the budget. So, to me, the first job of a chief executive, be it in government or in the private sector, is to cut costs 
yung mga waste. Mm -hmm. Hindi ko nakikita yan sa kayo. Anong pwede sa parte ng budget ang pwede bawasan naman? Yun ang unang trabaho eh. Mm -hmm. Ano yung mga duplication? Ano yung mga... So, alimbawa, um, administrative expenses. Why is it so expensive for, for government to deliver a service? Uh, so, tanggalin natin muna yung mga waste. Uh, or halimbawa, yung mga aircon lang, office supplies, sobra-sobra na yan eh, tingin ko eh. So, ang laki yung pwedeng bawasan dyan. Uh, so that we can put that money in good use. After mm -hmm. all, these are taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to increase the budget uh, and to impose taxes. Remember, government is a monopoly. Mm -hmm. Okay? Walang kalaban ng gobyerno eh. Uh, so, ang unang trabaho niya is tanggalin nga yung mga waste at saka red tape. Kasi may, may gasto sa inyo red tape eh. You know, if you're a small business, incidentally, your tax return, you have to file, a, you're a small business, you're ta you have to file, what, monthly, quarterly, 36 times in a year. Hmm. Uh, you're a small mom and pop operation, a small restaurant. How much is the cost of that red tape? Mm -hmm. uh, may compliance officer ako just to work with the BIR. So, ang laki niyan eh. Uh, that's why we rank very low in um, setting up a business. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Pahirap ng gobyerno yan eh. So, tagalin natin lahat yun. No? And uh, delivering a service, halimbawa, DSWD. Maganda pakinggan. Magbigay tayo, may CCT. Magbigay din tayo ng 20 kilo ng bigas quarterly. Mm -hmm. The cost of administering that program might be more expensive than the bigas na pinibigay mo. Yeah. Yung mga ganun. So, we have to take a look at all of this, and we will look at every department mm -hmm. uh, once we start discussing the budget, not only in committee, but also in the floor. Senator, Anong waste na pwede natin putulit? How about lump sums? Why do you think it's, lump sums. it has long been an issue? Matagal lang yun i Not only Bakit because of corruption, not only because of corruption, basta't lump sum yan, discretionary yan. Mm. Huh? So, may corruption yan. Possibly may corruption yan, no? Uh, pangalawa, even worse, kung lump sum yan at hindi uh, in the end divide, that is the primary reason why hindi nagagastos yung budget. Mm -hmm. That is the primary reason. It's a lump sum. Ibig sabihin, hindi nakaplano mabuti. Yes. Huh? I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. DepEd for next year. Do we keep on saying that the budget of DepEd will increase to 500 plus billion next mm -hmm. year? Mm -hmm. Ang lump sum dun, school building is 118 billion. Sa ngayon, walang listahan. Of a in the list. budget, mm -hmm. saan ba ilalagay yung classroom na yan? But what are the Some basis of the, those numbers? Tabletop computations, o siguro, mm -hmm. when they discuss with the DBM, mm -hmm. o ano yung freed up space in the budget, o sige, mm -hmm. let's increase the budget of education, let's By build more classroom, and then, number. alam mo yung, so I filed bills, halimbawa, I'll give mm -hmm. you an example. Dapat lahat ng school sites natin, lahat na ngayon may K-12 tayo. Mm -hmm. Kulang na kulang ang classroom sa That's senior right. high school. Mm -hmm. okay? Wala tayong land um, site development plan in all our schools. Wala nga ang titulo. Eh. Mm -hmm. So, each school, dapat yan may site development plan. So that when you build classrooms, you know where to build them. Hindi kung saan-saan lang. You're not maximizing the use of your property, the lands. Mm -hmm. In the private sector, pinaplan yan. Let's That's say, right. at, at the Neo, La Salle, at UP, I'm sure, mm -hmm. pinaplano nila where to build uh, the buildings, the classrooms, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Or diba? the next Senate of the Philippines. <laughs> well, we don't even <laughs> have it. Eh. <laughs> ah, so Kumatutu same thing with our, especially our schools. Uh, wala tayong site development plan. You have 40, roughly 42,000 elementary schools, if I'm not missing. Almost one in every barangay. You only have 7,000 high schools. So, Kaya malaki ang dropout rate from elementary to high schools or grade 6 to grade 7 or 6 before to first year high school. Because in effect, you need to walk 7 barangays mm -hmm. to get to the next high school. Uh, so I find also bills having integrated schools. Lalo na ngayon, may K-12. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, I'm also one of the authors, if I think I'm principal author, author of K-12, and Kinder Free Kindergarten app. Mm -hmm. Ganun ka importante, we all know how important mm -hmm. education is, eh, mm -hmm. So, moving forward, like I said, you have to have a site development plan for each school. So, what's the relationship now to the lump sum ng DepEd? 118 billion yan. 
So they just look, okay, there are ganito ang karaming estudyante natin. Uh, they're located here. Ergo, dapat ang budget dito sa ganitong lugar, ito yung tong value, ito yung classroom sa dapat. Incidentally, hindi na one size fits all eh. Mm -hmm. In Metro Manila or in Lipa City, the population is getting bigger all over the country, especially urban migration in Metro mm -hmm. Manila, let's say Lipa City. Mm -hmm. The lots are not getting any bigger. Mm -hmm. The cost per square meter of the property is getting more expensive. You have to build upward. So vertical more. na yung mga buildings mo, mas mm -hmm. mahal yun. Four high. floors na yan. Mm -hmm. That's why all the more you have to plan do a site development plan in all your schools. Senator, in previous uh, budgets, the budget for school building was not a lump sum. It was... Lump sum din yan. Mm -hmm. And that's why the absorptive capacity of the debit is very low. Mm -hmm. That's why we've not built as many as, as, we, many as we need to. That's why there's always a catch-up mode. Mm -hmm. Walang plano eh. Walang, like I said, wala nga titulo, wala nga site development plan, wala puro hula. What about the red flag from the budget, mm. in the budget, that is new to this administration? So, may lump sum na pala dati dun sa, ano, sa... Mas malaki yung lump sum din mas, oh, mas malaki yung lump sum. Oh, marami oh, pa rin lump sums. Yeah, any oh, other... Health enhancement facility. Ah, okay. Yes, lump yes, sum yes. din yan. Mm -hmm. So, health naman to. Mm -hmm. oh, where are you gonna build the uh, new bed capacity? RHUs, rural health units. Mm -hmm. Uh, maraming kalokohan pagka lump sum yan. Mm -hmm. Mas mabuti naka-line item. Kung pwede nga, lahat ng proyekto mo, ilagay mo mo sa Facebook eh. Mm -hmm. Para ma-monitor ng tao eh. Mm -hmm. Yun ang pinakamagandang FOI compliance. Mm -hmm. To in, me. In the past, uh, has Congress succeeded in forcing these agencies to give To a certain device? degree, yeah. Yes. Especially after the Supreme Court ruling. Mm -hmm. Now, the budget is thicker nowadays. Yes. But remember, the budget is getting bigger next year. It's gonna be 300... 3.3 trillion, mm -hmm. okay? The deficit, aside aside from being 2% of GDP, will be 3. That's an 150 billion more in borrowing, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. Okay? Plus, you're going to have more borrowing and more taxes, ah. So, <laughs> and that's our job in the minority, ah? And to make sure that we spend the budget properly. Kailangan may taga-banday eh. Hindi pa pwedeng mm -hmm. wala eh. Hindi pwede lahat ng congressman, lahat ng senador, hallelujah. Kailangan may taga-banday. Time before you ask that question. Okay. I think yung isang tanong from social media, can you bring that up uh, from number five? Um, from uh, Angel. Um, yung sinasabi mo, somebody has to make bantay. Mm -hmm. Diba? Mm -hmm. I think at, in this day and age, baka nga you're prone to being or vulnerable to being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. no? Parang bakit naman kailangan? Aren't we all behind this particular president and so on? So the question from Angel is, how does it feel to be often be misunderstood by your fellow Filipinos? Uh, it's part of the work. Uh, you cannot, you know, in public service, you cannot be onion-skinned. Kasama sa trabaho yan eh. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to make tough decisions. Mm -hmm. And when you decide to be in this field also, be, be, be ready that everyone will, will agree with you. Kaya tayo may demokrasya. People will judge you. Huh? Um, you know, I've, I've passed uh, unpopular laws in the past. Mm -hmm. Ganun talaga. I paid, I paid, paid for the it. Yeah. I paid the price for mm -hmm. it, but that's, that's part of your job. Pero kailangan may parinindigan nga. Uh, well, like I said, the, the war on drugs should be supported. Mm -hmm. uh, pero bantayan natin yung vigilante killings. Hindi tama yun. Uh, uh, you know, you, you will be unpopular mm -hmm. if you you go against that, I mm -hmm. suppose, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's part of the part of the work. Mm. So, just briefly, Senator, um, what are your priority items? What would you want included in the budget that you think aren't sufficient in its current form right now? Uh, marami, there's a lot. No, there's not. It's not one or the other. It's. Mm -hmm. I you know I have a program called Hearts, uh, healthcare, mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. agriculture, roads and infrastructure, mm -hmm. technology, tourism, security and shelter. So I look at it in, mm -hmm. in that respect. Among others, governance issues, mm -hmm. and, and others. So, but. Um, Important rin, like, like I mentioned the other day also in a press release, yung food feeding. 
we are spending 13 pesos. The DSWD has a 4 billion budget for mm -hmm. 2 million kids na pinapakain natin who are not uh, uh, of age for school yet. No? The DEPED also has another roughly 4.5 billion for 2.1 million kids, 5 years old up to 11. Okay. So, tingin ko kulang na kulang yung pondo yan. Dagdagan natin yung food feeding program. Um, we have so many malnourished children and uh, and um, what do you call this? Yung hindi tumatangkad. Stunted, Stunted growth. growth. Okay, so yan, binabantayan natin yan. Especially now you have this demographic profile um, that majority of your population will be of working age. Mm -hmm. Kailangan binabantayan natin yan. Uh, you're gonna hit this demographic sweet spot. Mm -hmm. What you don't want, so yun numero yun. You see that the population, a large number of the people will be able to work. Okay? But then, if these kids are not educated or unhealthy, we did not take care of them. Ano mangyayari? That's going to be a ticking time bomb. Magiging malaking problema yan. Mm -hmm. So, now that we have more resources, finally, okay? Now that interest rates are cheap also, that's why I don't mind having a deficit naman to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. okay? Now's the time to make these investments, which will pay off later on. Now's the time to do that. Let's not waste this opportunity. Let's not wait till oil hits $100 a barrel again, <laughs> if it ever does, right? Mm -hmm. Or interest rates hit again, mm -hmm. double digits, so on and so forth. You have this window of opportunity now to make these investments huh? in human capital and infrastructure. The signing opportunity there. That's right. And you're looking at the next, what, 30, 40 years uh, of that demographic sweet spot that you're talking. So, you know, theoretically, you can grow for the next 30, 40 years. And in, the, in a spot, if you do it right, mm -hmm. in a few more years, you could be part of G20. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're probably now the 45th biggest economy in the world. Mm -hmm. But we're leaving standards, you go to 126. Uh, that is sad. <laughs> uh, that is sad. No? Mm -hmm. So moving, if you can grow double digit, mm -hmm. we get our acts together, make the, the right investments, more inclusive growth, so on and so forth. Uh, you could be part of G20 in, in no time. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because you have a big population. Eh? That's right. Uh, Senator, um, there are so many questions to ask. I mean, this has been very, very uh, instructive. But we only have six minutes uh, yes, left, yes. and uh, we'd like to reserve two to three minutes for a for a little game we call the good, the mad, the bad, the bad and the uh, maybe. Uh, okay. But before that, uh, th that's just ten quick questions, you know, sure, with, uh, sure. quick answers. But uh, before that, can you? I mean, so we've talked about uh, the president. We've talked about uh, extrajudicial killings and 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 all that. Um, is there a major issue that mainstream media has failed to cover properly in your view i mean there's a lot of issues to cover now that's so true i mean it's always going to be the sexy issues you mm -hmm. away 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 mm -hmm. huh? uh, a lot of uh, are covered the man no? mm -hmm. better you you know the most important well, come here legislators come here so and the most important is actually the budget and taxes, mm -hmm. revenue and spending. Mm -hmm. So it's not a sexy issue, and media will mm -hmm. not cover that much, right? So that's, that's right. Yeah. yeah, but that that if you want to educate the the people and the public uh, in other countries, in other jurisdictions, people understand the left and the right. Mm -hmm. People understand conservative, yes. liberal. Mm -hmm. Dito walang ganon eh. So that is not so much uh, discussed in media. Uh, and in many other jurisdictions also, uh, media is either conservative or liberal. Dito, hindi masyado maliwanag ang distinction din, di ba? That's true. So, time, maybe we can have our... We can start the <laughs> segment. Um, so, to those tuning in, listening to us tonight, we're still at INQ&A with Senator Ralph Recto. We have a very short segment we call The Good, The Bad, and The Maybe. It's basically us giving you uh, 10 issues or ideas and mm. you're only allowed to answer if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Okay. You can say maybe only once as, okay. a, as an escape <laughs> if, you, if okay. you feel that it's a hard question. 
Although okay. if we still have uh, time later, you can explain some of your answers if you okay. want. To. Okay. Is that all right? Sure, okay. sure, sure. Give them one day. Give them one day. Okay. Uh, so um, let's start. Uh, the first uh, item is kicking out U.S. from Mindanao. Uh, bad idea. Official Gazette Facebook post on Ferdinand Marcos. I've not, I've not uh, seen it. The controversial, but you've heard about it. I've heard about it, but I've not read it myself. Yet. So that qualifies as a maybe? <laughs> I no, answer. no answer. No answer, but right, it's okay. not familiar. No, no, I'll say bad. Let me put it this way, bad from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, lack of sensitivity. Okay. Um, and Danar as presidential communications office head. <laughs> He's trying his best. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, social media is part of government <laughs> budget, so including spending on social media. Good. Peace talks with the CPP. Good, very good. The new iPhone 7. <laughs> very random. Don't plan to buy it, so I'm not sure if... Good for it. Uh, um, increased new office... Way, new technology, guys. Yeah. Plan, uh, Increased Office of the President budget. Well, I don't know. I'm not intelligence fund behind. <laughs> yeah, or you can say, maybe you can say what which particular one you would uh, want the to Good demand, on. good demand, good demand. Increasing the budget of the Office of the President. Yeah. Marcos Burial at Libingan ng mga bayani. Maybe. Mm. Replacing it's more fun in the Philippines as tourism slogan. Bad. Um, last one is federalism for the Philippines. Ugly. <laughs> we didn't Ugly. have that in the... That's easy. That's uh, easy. Uh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's easy. From day one, I already said that. Oh, what are your main reasons against uh, federalism? Uh, dagdag bureaucracy, dagdag red tape, dagdag taxes, dagdag gastos lang yan. And you're speaking also as a former representative. And yes. You know, your uh, wife was mayor you're and governor. You're fortunate enough, enough to, be, to have the experience of being a congressman, mm -hmm. a senator, a member of the cabinet. My wife was mayor as governor. Mm -hmm. So full circle na yan. So more mm -hmm. or less we understand. I think all you need is amendments to the local government code. I don't think you need to tinker with the constitution and totally... Uh, revise it to have a federal system of government. Now, I understand that the president is the position of the president is that because he's a mayor he, mm -hmm. from Mindanao, mm -hmm. particularly Davao. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but I think in the in the next few months, now that he is he's sitting in a different saddle mm -hmm. as president of this country, mm -hmm. he have a different the view. way yeah he he will have a different view. Um, it's a different style, eh? mm -hmm. it's, it's a different perspective now. And if you look at uh, the positions that they're, it, it seems to favor unitary, mm -hmm. more authoritarian guy. Mm -hmm. So will he be willing to give up powers? I don't think so. Is your view shared by the other members of the Senate minority? I don't. Um, I think so. What I about so. other senators from the majority? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I, I think it will be a difficult debate in the Senate. I think it's a difficult debate on federalism, uh, even as early as now. Uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Tito Soto was with us, and he mm -hmm. said that the earliest you can start uh, debating the Constitutional Convention or con Constituent mm -hmm. Assembly and would be in January yeah, after, yeah. The, after, after the budget. After the budget. Yeah. So after maybe, budget. maybe uh, passions would have cooled by then, or. You know, uh, the, the situation might be very different come January. The, the situation will de be definitely different, I suppose. No? But uh, yeah, things will change, I'm sure, uh, between now and then. Uh, but you know, principles don't change. Uh, I, I think that you can just amend the local government code. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're really serious and federalist, if you take baby steps toward that, if at all. So the first is, okay, let's amend the local government code. Mm -hmm. Um, what about uh, apparently mining? Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much centralized today. So why not? Are they willing to allow that in the provinces? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. What, what, maybe just one last question. What about the Bangsamoro question? Mm. Uh, that's different. That's mm. in the Constitution. No, but uh -huh. uh, it seems that proponents mm. uh, see federalism as the end state, the end goal. Uh, and I think that's what the, the president also... The Constitution talks mm. about an autonomous region for Muslim Mindanao. Mm -hmm. And we tried to do that that's right. In the first place, I think it was wrong to be put in the Constitution. Ah. Okay. <laughs> okay. But nevertheless, it's there already, and mm -hmm. we're, we swore to uphold mm -hmm. that. So anyway, uh, so the karuna problema sa arm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's amend it to improve the situation. Fine with me. Fine with me. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I, Metro Manila, Region Three, Region Four. These three regions alone is sixty-five percent of GDP. That's right. Who pays for the subsidy in arm? 65% will come from these three regions. Now, if you're going to make federal states out of these regions, I know, mawawala ng subsidy. And from what I hear, from what, what I hear that them talking about is 80% of natural wealth ibigay natin sa federal states, 20% na sa central government. Okay? How are you going divide to divide the debt of this country? Interest expense mm -hmm. on your debt is already, what, 13, 15%? Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay? Uh, matitira lang, 5% na lang. Uh, you know, you, you put the pesos and cents to their mm -hmm. proposals. Mm -hmm. You add the numbers to all of that, the math is wrong. 80-20, 20 is a national, 80 is a baba. Mm -hmm. Eh, yung interest expense on the debt pa lang eh. 13% na yun eh. Paano may di-divide yan? There's so many things. There's just so many things. The math is wrong. I think there's only one sitting senator. When you hear those words, you know it's uh, it was spoken by <laughs> Senator Ralph Recto. Senator, uh, we're three minutes over time. Uh, this has been a very interesting discussion. Uh, we look forward to the debates when they uh, on uh, on federalism when they uh, when January rolls along. Um, but for now, we'll have to say goodbye. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Senator. Um, thank you to everyone who watched us tonight. Um, who's next on the hot seat? Follow us on Twitter, Janeary underscore newsstand and K Sabilio I N Q to learn who will who our next guest will be. So thank you again and good night. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, I N Q and A. Thank you and good night.